You ready? Oh yeah, brother. We're talking about solving linear equations that are non-homogeneous. Ready, 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 ready. And we're gonna do this by way of the annihilator method. Oh yeah, right? Oh no. Here's the annihilator method. We have a seven step, seven step process and it's not short. Okay, ready, 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 ready? We need to determine the annihilator. We'll talk about in a minute how to determine that annihilator. Then we're gonna apply that annihilator to both sides of the non-homogeneous linear differential equations. When would I use this method? When I have a non-homogeneous linear differential equations. But what if it was it? Don't worry about that. That's what this one's for. Okay, so then when we annihilate that right-hand side, which is what it does, it gets rid of the, the, the non-y part. Okay, to make it zero, to make it homogeneous. Right, so we apply the annihilator to both sides and it kills this side. So we wanna solve that and we wanna get solutions for that. Okay, so then we list those solutions. Then what do we need to do? We need to find the solutions to the part of the equation as if it was homogeneous. This is my original, original operator on y or um, differential equation. What did we do? We're gonna solve it for as if it was homogeneous and we're gonna call that our yc. Okay, come back to that. Step five, we wanna eliminate the solutions of four from three. Okay, now in our second example for the annihilator method, I'm going to show you why that's important. All right, okay, so we're going to eliminate the ones from four, of four, from three, and the remaining is going to be the particular solution, yp. Okay, so now what? Solve for the unknown coefficients in the particular solution, yp, by substituting that back into the original homogeneous equation, or non-homogeneous equation, yes. Right, after you find those coefficients for your yp, your general solution is yc plus yb. What are we doing around these parts? We're eliminating the non-homogeneous part. Yes, and let's talk about our hit list. Let's talk about who kills what. Okay, if on the right-hand side you have a function that's like a polynomial, um, this operator is going to kill it. Ooh. If you have an exponential on the right-hand side, when I'm saying right-hand side, I'm talking about standard position. Yes. Um, if that's that exponential, then this operator is going to kill it. If you have a combination, oh, up, down, up, down, left, right, left, right, A, B, A, B, start. Oh, not that kind of combination. Yes, if you have a combination of these two, what's going to kill it? Wait, what killed it here? The one more derivative of that? Um, annihilates it, puts into oblivion, it'll ruin. Right, now I have this combination, so I'm gonna have the combination of these two annihilators. Oh. Now, what if I had um, a cosine, right? Repeated, repeated. These are all familiar functions that we've seen thus far in this differential equations course. Yeah, um, if you have cosine, or sine rather, this is going to annihilate him. Yes, AKA get rid of him. Yeah, oh, what if we put it all together? What do we got? Exponentials, cosines, and um, polynomial parts? Then this is going to kill it, where this kills. Oh, now if we separate, separate off that A and we regroup these, it's gonna factor into something like that, and that's gonna kill the cosine and the sine. Okay, but wait, this is also gonna kill the exponential. Oh, and then this takes care of the arguments. Which one? This one and that one. Arr. Ooh, that should have been maybe A to make it look all familiar and stuff. Yeah, so that it lines up with these. Yes. Okay, and then that kills, kills, kills this part because you need one more. Yes. So if we have a combination in ten or in a product, then it's a combination of the hit list. But what if you had had a sum? What if you had something like e to the r x? Okay, plus um, wait for it, cosine of b x. Now here, that's a sum. That's going to be a product of the annihilators. What's going to kill this? Well, whatever kills this times whatever kills that. So we, the annihilator of this one would be d minus r from e to the r times, wait for it, what kills cosine? You kill cosine. Oh no, this b, that should be a b, 
right there. Whew, isn't that a B? Yes. So then, so then, so then this is D2 plus B squared. Oh, and that'll be the annihilator of that sum. Let's go get some. Due to the length of the following example, we will not have our usual format. The annihilator method. Oh boy! Start to finish, we eat our spinach. We're about to annihilate this one. This is a non-homogeneous linear differential equation. Oh! Step one, decide what annihilates that right hand side. In this first example, we see the D3 is gonna annihilate that X to the two. Oh! Here we have it in differential notation. Sure, with our um, differential op operators. So we put it into operator notation. Oh! So here we have the form. Um, PDY mm -hmm, is equal to F of X. Oh boy! Step two, apply the annihilator to both sides. I apply the annihilator to the left-hand side of each one of those. They may not be commutative, but this has um, constant coefficients, so it is gonna be. Okay, ready, 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 ready. Claim, what happens on that right-hand side? It annihilates it. Right, oh boy, why? And the viewer should check that, mm-hmm. Okay, so then on the left-hand side, I have this in step three. We need to solve this and find our potential, so or find our solutions. Okay, for our, um, potential or our particular yeah so then we go bam put it back in the operator notation this has characteristic polynomial bam what did i do i factored that guy why because i'm looking for my r's right my eigenvalues here well they will be um my r is zero how many times one two three so i have r multiplicity three oh also r is going to be two oh or one oh so then here i see with this repeated root i have c1 plus c2x plus c3x squared oh e to the zero oh, x as if it mattered Okay, get nice and tight in here, yes. So then C4 e to the 2x is also a solution and C5 e to the x is also a solution. Step three, complete. Step four, I'm gonna take it to the top. I'm gonna take the left-hand side of my original differential equation and pretend, suppose, that it was homogeneous. And I'm gonna solve this so that I can exclude those solutions and find my YC. Ready, 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 ready. Oh, put it back out. Oh, characters polynomial factor. R's are gonna be two and three. So here we see our solutions are gonna be the same as C4 e to the two X and C5 e to the X. Okay, so what does that mean? That means my YC is gonna be this guy. Okay, and then I'm gonna go and I'm gonna exclude him and him. Step four, complete. Step five, we assume our particular solution, yes, is gonna be the stuff after we eliminated the solutions to the pretend homogeneous. Okay, so then here we have C1 plus C2X plus C3X squared. Okay, I got rid of the E to the ox. Mm, I mean E to the zero, which is one. Okay, so then now step five, complete. Oh, I'm gonna take it to the top. Step six, I take that part, step, step five, my particular solution. Now I wanna find the coefficients for this solution. I wanna find my C1, my C2, and C3, and how am I gonna do this? I'm gonna come original, I'm gonna come original. I'm gonna plug it up into the non-homogeneous original equation. Ready, 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 ready. In order to do that, I need a couple of derivatives and I took them right here. Oh, recall, cause we're in nice and tight here, that our original OG differential equation, why don't we call it DE, <laughs> OG DE, Yes, is this guy. Okay, so then I'm gonna go and I'm gonna plug it in, plug it in, oh, 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 uh-huh, original. Remember, you can pause this video because I know we're going kind of fast. So then I clean it up. Yes, it goes, ooh, ooh, yes, ooh, ooh, yes. Oh, all right, fine. Now, um, I gather, collect, and combine. Gather, collect, and combine. Here, I get all my x squareds together, I get all my x's together, and I get all my constants together, and then that's still equal to this 
4x squared over here. Right. Why did I do that? Because the only two ways that, or the only way that these two polynomials are going to be equal is if the x squareds are equal, if the x's are equal, and if the constants are equal. And that's what you see here. Yes, this system of three equations with three unknowns. Here, my um, coefficients on my x squared terms have to be equal, which implies that c3 is 2. Oh, yeah. So then, if, if c3 is 2, then c2 is 6. I don't have anything that goes with 6. So then, so then, so then, so if c2 and c3 are 2 and 6 respectively, then, um, vice versa, then um, I can plug them here and here, which implies that c1 is 9. Fine. So that gives me my particular equation with the coefficients is 9 plus 6x plus 2x squared. Fine. Finish him. Step 6. Complete. Step 7. I just scalped that marker. Ouch. Step seven. I know that my um, general solution is going to be yb plus yc. Whip, whip. Um, so then my general solution, y is equal to 9 plus 6x squared plus 2x squared plus c4 e to the 2x plus c5 e to the x. Woo. And now if I had initial conditions, I'd apply them to this one to get my c4 and c5. Finish him. A box and a flower. That's not a flower. What is that? <laughs> Some of you guys are saying that was easy. Everybody else is like, wow.